The events of today's gospel are, is what follows from what had taken place just before. Our Lord was in Bethany visiting his friends before his passion was to begin. Of course, Mary and Martha were there doing their normal thing. And Lazarus, who had already been risen from the dead, was there as well. Tomorrow, they all thought, and Our Lady, they say, although the gospel makes no mention of it, she was there too, and her heart filled with sadness at what was to come. Because tomorrow, our Lord goes in to Jerusalem. If you've ever wondered to what depths fallen human nature can sink, wonder no longer after reading today's gospel. Jesus Christ came upon earth out of an infinite love for man and also to fulfill God's justice on behalf of man who could not pay the debt. He taught poverty, humility, love of enemy, and so on and so forth. And this all was a scandal, a terrible scandal, to the proud Pharisees. They would not even hear truth with a capital T, God himself. For three solid years, the Pharisees, too, had heard the consoling doctrines of God-made man, which only uplift and encourage those who hear with an open mind. For three years, they had seen with their own eyes the miracles that confirmed his teachings. They had been witness to, the, to our Lord's goodness to the people, the healings, the kindness that he showed them, the fact that he even made friends with some of them. Yet he, our Lord, was too much for their pride. And so today, the Pharisees, they sink to new depths of pride and stupidity. They discuss Lazarus. They discuss how this man had been risen had been raised from the dead by this man, Jesus. We should put him to death. As if putting Lazarus to death would somehow take away the power of Christ. We should put Lazarus to death, otherwise all the people will follow him. Well, if our Lord raised a man from the dead, shouldn't you, Pharisees, be following him. They discuss how many people are coming to town for the great feast day, and we have to do something, or else the whole world will follow them. It was a sort of prophecy that they did not know they were uttering. This is to what depths fallen human nature will go. Such envy and hatred leads to foolish stupidity in our behavior. The thought that we would, that these men would kill Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. But this is not only the Pharisees, this is all of us. They say that the saints, because as you progress in the spiritual life, the temptations become more intense, and from, from the temptations of the sense, they move into spiritual temptations against, for instance, hope or faith, etc. And they say that the saints always, throughout their whole life, even though they were so close to God and so attached to Him, they felt they were always on the brink of falling away from God and into mortal sin. So much so, St. Philip Neri, it's a beautiful prayer to remember, 
and to say frequently. He said, Lord, watch over me today or I shall betray you like Judas did. The saints believed it because they knew fallen human nature. Well, people, they come from all over, as we mentioned, and they see Lazarus alive and well. They go to talk to him. And then, because they had seen a man raised from the dead, they had to see the one who raised him. And they saw our Lord. They followed him. And they threw down their palms before him as he rode into town on a donkey. And not long after, even their fallen human nature would lead them to cry out for Christ's death. But our Lord, when he was riding into that town that day, he had other things on his mind. It wasn't just the acclamations of the people. He saw in those palms the palm of his martyrdom, his death, and he welcomed it. Unless a seed falling into the ground dies, there will be no fruit. It's a paraphrase from the gospel and how true it is. That, was how it, that is how it was with the martyrs. The blood of the martyrs was the seed of Christians. And the more the martyrs were put to death, the more Christians there were. And so in our life, too, we have to remember that saying. If you love your life, you will lose it. In other words, that seed has to die before you can bear any fruit in your spiritual life. It means looking beyond the temporal things, looking beyond your own sufferings into eternity. It means living a life of mortifying the old man who must be gotten rid of so that the new man of grace can live. It means mortifying it so that you grow more and more attached to Christ. But today let's remember with pity the stupidity of the Pharisees and their, their envy but don't remember it with pride as if you could not do the same thing. Humble yourself today, as the angels did before the human nature of the God-man. Humility, that is the secret to growing in the spiritual life, that is the foundation without which there is no spiritual edifice. Humble yourself, admit your weakness, and remember that without God's grace, you could do nothing to further your salvation. And then fall on your knees before your guardian angel to assist you, to assist you in ways that you perhaps won't see, but they do nonetheless. Ask them to help you one day to, fulfill, to fill one of those thrones from which the stars of heaven, the bad angels, had fallen.